Okay, let's continue with our discussion about um, authority. Say a few things first. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about rights and, and that kind of stuff. Remember, a right isn't something that you can just claim to do whatever you want. Sometimes the people who are loudest about their rights are people who just misuse rights to do dumb things. Just because you have the potential to do something doesn't mean you should do something. And just, once again, a right isn't necessarily... People define a right as something that they they can do, but they define it as pretty much anything that they want to do. That makes sense? Which actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I have a right to do this, I have a right to do that. Well, if you're a Christian, you don't have a right to do this or that. You only have a right to do... Well, you have the ability to do something, but that doesn't mean you have the right to do it. I don't know that, but uh, Americans, in, in, in a broader aspect, you may have the ability to do something that doesn't give you the right to do something. Um, for instance, uh, uh, you have the ability to do drugs, but you do not have a right to do drugs, right? A right is something that is given, um, well, that's a little bit off topic, but basically what I want to talk about is, or what I wanted to emphasize is the way that as Christians sometimes we uh, mistake the ability to do something for a right to do it. Um, and, and also there's a few things, you know, when you teach someone something, like principles, like the principles I'm talking about here, there's usually two reactions that happen. The first is somebody's never thought of it. And so you say it, and it's like they have a, a profound revelation. Ah! But then there's this other group of people where when you say it, they don't really hear it. Make sense? Um, they don't see how it applies to them. Um, they just kind of, it goes in one ear and kind of, they, they don't even really consider it. You know what I mean? Like, we get in a rut of our tradition of this is how we do things, and we just kind of accept it rather than um, stopping and really analyzing our, our, our motives, what we're doing. Why am I doing this? What purpose does it serve? Is it is it good or is it bad? You know, And that's what I'm talking about. We really need to stop and really analyze, take time to analyze um, what we're doing and why we're doing it. And then take time to, to, to pay attention to these points and then try to apply them to yourself. So how does this apply to me? See what I mean? So, a little bit about the pastor. First off, the pastor is not there for entertainment or for us to judge. We have this idea, you know, we're, we're just don't say anything about the pastor. Don't say anything to the pastor. You know what I mean? What we try to do is, is, is we labor a pastor. So he'll have his job to do, right? Which is equipping us for ministry, which is, you know, um, uh, being an example, which is, you know, witnessing and discipleship just like it is for us. You know, that, 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 that's his job. Um, but then what we do is we labor that job. We make it more difficult by giving him, by by loading he, uh, burdens on him. This uh, let me let me differentiate what I'm saying. There's a person who's going through something and they go to the pastor for help. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the person who is a thorn on the pastor's side. They're always um, coming against everything that he says. Every decision that he makes is the wrong one. Um, you know, they're always giving pointers as to how, he, how his sermon went. They're, they're always correcting him, always doing this and that, always comparing him to other people, always comparing him to other pastors, maybe to a previous pastor, maybe to a previous pastor that, he, that they liked more than this current pastor, that kind of stuff. So it's important to note that the pastor is not there for our entertainment. He's not also not there for us to judge. He's a leader over us that is raising us up into ministry. But see, obviously in our rebellious culture, um, we've kind of lost that. Um, so the pastor's not there for our entertainment. That means if he doesn't give the message exactly how we like, that's okay. That means if he doesn't say things exactly how we like, that's okay. Okay. Um, also, there's the fact that a church is not a dictatorship. It is. Um, it, it is. It is something where the pastor is voted in, and then he's held to a Christian standard, and he is not. I'm not saying he gets left scot free. There are standards for the pastor, but also keep in mind that um, once again, balance. Okay, let me give you an example. Some people would say that the pastor has absolute authority, and you know he he doesn't answer to anyone in the church or out of the church, 
and um, that he can even control when you move and, 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 and what you can buy and what you can do in life. And, and I would say that's definitely not true. What did Peter say with Ananias and Sapphira? Yeah. Um, he said, was it not your own before you sold it? When he's talking about the property that they sold, was it not your own? In other words, you could have done whatever you decided. I had no bearing of that. Okay. In the same way, um, pastors don't have that authority. Okay. Their authority is your spiritual leader um, and for the discipline in the church and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, with that being said, not every time that there's a conflict does it need to go to the pastor. Okay, if you've caused a problem, go and resolve the problem. If you have a problem with someone, go and talk to them. It doesn't need to go to the pastor every single time or go to the elders to, so you can cause more problems. This is what we do. We have a problem with this person. So we go to this person who goes to the elder, and then the elder will resolve the issue for us rather than us resolving the issue. So that builds builds walls and whatnot, and then there's this conflict where there, where there shouldn't have been. Okay, uh, But then also... There are some people who think that the pastor doesn't have any authority. The board makes all the decisions for them. Uh, you know, they pretty much just do the speaking and the house visits, and that's it. And that's not biblical either. Um, there is definitely, like I say, there's a, there's a middle ground. Um, pastors are the the head of the church, not the elders, not the board. It is the pastors, okay? Or deacons, uh, the elders, or the deacons, or whatever. I, I know every church is different. Some people call them bishops. Some people call them deacons. Whatever they are. Pastor, whoever else is there, the, the elder or the deacon or the bishop or whatever, and then the, uh, the, lay, the lay leaders, and then the lay, okay? Um, layman. Um, so, so there's that structure there, but that doesn't mean that he has absolute authority in every area of life, nor does he have no authority, okay? Keep things in balance. Um, so obviously the pastor should be held to a Christian standard. That means if he is being immoral, if he is um, not fulfilling his job of raising up people to be ministers or um, not deciding people or not witness, uh, witnessing to people, that would be something where he's not, he's not fulfilling his job. The pastor is meant to be a, a model for us, a shepherd for us. Um, but anyways... Uh, but most op opposition to the pastor has to do with preference and bias and not the church function. The majority of opposition to a pastor has to do with personal feelings and, and, and things that just don't even matter. Okay, we're, People in America really have gotten too, too used to playing games. They're here to play church, they're not actually here to be the church. Um, you know, Things have to be just right, they have to, everything has to remain the same. No, there can be no change whatsoever. We can't do anything that impacts the community or that reaches out and touches people. It always has to be self-focused and focused on preservation rather than uh, multiplication. So, pastor doesn't dictate life decisions. Gives, he gives spiritual guidance. I think that's pretty clear. Um, but don't get the idea that it's us against them. It's a team. We are a team. The leader needs support. Okay? It's like Moses. When he was on, the, when he was fighting uh, the Amalek, when he was fighting Amalek, he needed those two people to hold up his hands, right? And then he needed the other people to do the fighting, right? Moses didn't do it himself. It's the same way with the pastor. And I would encourage you, if you are in leadership, to not try and do it yourself. Um, everybody needs help. Um, but never compare the current pastor with the previous pastor, either negatively or positively. What's going to happen, especially if you are the leader, by the way, is you're going to cause tension. First off, you're going to say something, and eventually it's going to, excuse me, leak out and, and upset people. Or um, you're bad mouthing somebody else is going to cause people to undermine your leadership. Okay, so um, you do not have authority over the. Oh, and here's another thing. A lot of times, what we do is we compare a pastor with another pastor. You know, like, oh, this pastor was is a better person, or this pastor is. is and, and that's definitely not what we should be doing. Okay, uh, never compare the, the current pastor with a previous pastor. So, and also during times of transition, this this can be especially hard. People's times come and go, and when it's that person's time to go, remember it's not them. They don't have the power. They are simply used by God. Don't never forget that. God has a way of transitioning leadership, and what we do is we cling on to one leader and, and we make a transition very hard, or a leader um, will not want to uh, 
give up his, his responsibility and it just never works out well. Um, you do not have authority over the pastor. He has authority over you. Do not oppose him. Bad, obviously, bad things happen in our lives when we when we rebel against the authorities. Um, it just remember, it's as of witchcraft. Okay, it it definitely is um, something that has bad consequences. Has bad consequences. Um, if a pastor is abusing authority by being immoral, friends can say more than acquaintances. In other words, let's say the pastor is doing something wrong um, that actually needs to be addressed. You know, 95% of problems in the church just naturally go away. The problem is, is that we think that the little deals are going to be big deals, and then we make that 5% take up as much time as the, as the 95%. So, um, but if you if you are if you are acquainted with someone well enough where you are actually friends, you are close you will be able to say things that you wouldn't have been able to if you're just acquaintances. In other words, what I'm saying is make the time to get to know someone, and then when they need somebody to lean on, you're there. When they do fall into error, you're there. But the problem is, is that we make little segregated groups within a church. We have the elderly over here, and then they're kind of split into different groups, and there's always that one person somewhere in the church that tries to make their own little clique and get people against other people. And we make the church a country club where you have to have certain requirements to be a leader, you have I mean, to be involved to be to be at, to go to the church. You have to look the part, say the part, you have to do everything just perfect and it becomes all about um, how well you can present yourself to to be approved by men. Um, <clears throat> but when people are falling into sin, they always receive it better from a friend, a friend who says it in the right way. So what if I can't stop resenting this person who's in authority? What if I just, I just, ah, actually this is a good, this is, these principles apply to, to anyone who you resent. Um, first off, pray daily. I cannot express that in, in, in enough words. We oftentimes want immediate solutions for a problem that's taken time to develop. Oh, well, I only start, I got a bad attitude towards this person like yesterday. Yes, but that was from something else that was under, which was from something else that was on there. Things build up. They build up within us. So uh, first off, like for instance, let's say, um, let's say that we we're having a problem with uh, um, our boss at work. Okay. Uh, and then let's say that this is from um, a conflict that we have with our spouse, which is then from a conflict that we had with our parents and just kind of builds on each other. Um, so the first thing is pray daily. Um, get down and be in prayer on a mission. You are there to, to for, for a purpose. Have the mindset, I'm not, I'm not leaving until, I, I'm in this for a long run, I'm not leaving until this is resolved. Okay, and then the next day go back and do the same thing. Pray daily and actually seek after the Lord. Don't just you know pray a simple prayer and get up and leave. Actually give God time <laughs> to to um, talk with you. Fast. Always turn needs into in, into um, reasons for fa uh, for um, fasting, which will in turn draw, remind you to turn to the Lord uh, for things and um, become more mature. Um, third off, apologize to them for your attitude. Regardless of what who did what wrong, make sure that you always do what you're supposed to do. So even if they did something wrong and you react, apologize for your reaction. Okay? Um, we talked about this in the conscience lesson. Um, it was about keeping a clear conscience. So apologize to them for your attitude. Uh, fourth, think about other things. Sometimes we just let our minds go crazy. And, and, and we keep focusing and focusing, and then we keep going over the argument, and we keep going over things. And if he says this, I'm going to say this, and we have our perfect little scenarios and stuff, and we've just rehashed it so much um, in all the different ways that that, that that person has offended us, and we just go over it and over it in our minds until we have it perfected about who is absolutely right and who is absolutely wrong. Um, and, and it helps if we think about other things. Just focus on anything else. Start memorizing scripture or something. Um, uh, watch a well, I wouldn't say that, but potentially watch a movie or something. To do something to get your mind off of it, and then eventually get your mind on God. Now Philippians walks us through on this: on, on first rejoice in the Lord, and then uh, present your request to the Lord in prayer, um, and then focus your thinking. So, um, 
memorize scripture, a good way to keep your mind clear is by having um, having something else that can take up that time. Uh, memorizing scripture will help you to be more familiar with the Bible as a whole um, and just have good thoughts running through your mind rather than those bad ones. Think about how much of your thought life is dedicated to um, vengeful thinking and to bitter thinking. Um, if you uh, attribute even more of that to uh, positive thinking about scripture and those kind of things, not just positive thinking, but positive thinking in Christ, um, then it'll it'll drastically change how you act too. Because remember, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. In other words, what is festering inside will always have, find a way to come out. Okay. Um, so when we talk about positive thinking, we're, think, we're talking about thinking about things that God deems as good. Not simply building yourself up, but building yourself in the faith. Okay, there's a difference, and here's the difference. Now, building yourself up would be something like this. I'm okay, I'm a good person, I've got this covered. Building yourself up in Christ is, you know, Christ has got this covered. He is um, doing work, even though I don't see it. You know, building yourself up in Christ. Um... Don't hang around anyone that shares your negative views. The first thing we do whenever there's a, a conflict with someone is we always try to find allies. Um, and it just reinforces the bad attitude. Um, also, don't forget that you support your authority for your own good. Yeah, I, I've mentioned this a few times. Never side against the authority. Um, there's, always a, there's always a negative aspect that comes with that. And then never listen to or agree with someone who is bad-mouthing authority. Never listen to, if they're bad-mouthing authority, never listen to it. I'll walk away. And never agree with someone who is bad-mouthing authority. Okay? Even if you just sit there and go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they're going to say, oh, so-and-so agreed with me. See, unless you specifically say, I don't agree with this, I don't think you should talk about this, and then walk away, they oftentimes will misrepresent what you actually mean. Sometimes you're just trying to be nice. Um, and, you know, don't feel like you always have to lend an ear to someone who's going through something. Oh, I need to be there for them. And no, no. All you're doing is building up more, uh, more bad. So this is what's called the umbrellas of authority. Let me move this out of the way here. The umbrellas of authority. Okay. These are the umbrellas of authority here. Okay. And here are the people. Okay. So here comes harmful temptations or situations or attacks. Now, for those who have these umbrellas, they are um, they are covered, okay? Um, this is where God literally brings um, brings um, protection from these different situations. Not that you will never go through bad situations, but that situations will turn out better, um, that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, there will be fewer situations too, I will admit. Um, but God will protect us from these things. We won't be tempted to sin in different things. We won't have different bad situations come up. Uh, we won't have uh, as many people um, oppose us and whatnot. Uh, just uh, a lot different. Um, but the hero over here is the prideful who want to live their own life. They want to say that they're their own authority. They want to say that they are their own uh, way. They've got all the answers. That they can find their own solution. Um, and, and as you can see, there is no protection for them. Okay. Here's a new father who submitted to his own father, and here is, here's, see what I mean? The, the, the umbrellas give like these, this coverage where not only are you covered by your own umbrella of authority by staying submitted to your authority, but then you're covered by other people's too. Um, in other words, let's say um, here is your father, okay? He is in good relationship with his authority, and so you have submitted yourself under. So for a while you're over here, but then as you grow up and you marry and whatnot, this becomes you over here. So what happens is you have like this double bond. And what I'm saying is, let me say this in a different way. Um, an umbrella of authority is what what happens when um, we listen to our authority. Our authority figures are our umbrellas for us, and when when multiple people all join together in good relationship with their um, with their authority, it causes kind of a union between the two of you, where you will be a there will be able to be um, um, a bond. Um, I hope that that wasn't too confusing, but basically what it comes down to is is, is that um, our authority structures are uh, for our protection and, and they help us and. Um, even if we don't like them, even if they're not doing doing the best job in the world, uh, by staying submitted, there are definitely things that, that, that are um, 
withheld from 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 us. Um, so what causes bad attitude towards authority? Well, there's three basic reasons. First off is pride. Um, this was the same thing that got Satan. Um, saying off was mis is misunderstanding. This is this is what got Adam and Eve. Um, they they misunderstood the situation. They misread it. Okay. Pride says I know best. It, lo it looks to something else besides um, um, comparing yourself to God. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, then misunderstanding is is where you where you get a situation and you don't understand what your authority's purpose is in doing it, um, and so you, you you misunderstand and you just kind of assume what their purpose is. Uh, my boss had me move this, but then he just had me had me move these cans over. But then he just had me move all of them back again. Well, what was his purpose in that? See, what I mean, um, and what happens when, when we don't know is we just start making stuff up. We misunderstand, so we just attribute whatever we think best. So um, then, a third reason is the wounded spirit. Let's say um, a father promised his son that he was going to do something, and then he forgot, and the son never did. He was a wounded spirit. Um, so those are the three um, uh, the three main causes for bad attitude towards authority. Um, so let's talk about some definitions. Submit means give way to. Okay, we're talking about submitting to somebody. We're not talking about being their slave. We're talking about giving way to them. Okay. Um, honor. Think highly of. Um, honor your mother and father, think highly of them. That does not mean that you have to do everything that they say. That does not mean that you, that, that you should um, not do anything that they say. Okay. Um, honor means you, you're going to think highly of them. And also, if you think highly about someone, you'll probably listen to what they have to say. Just saying. Um, respect. Treat which means to treat with exception. Respect your authority. Treat them with exception. Um, uh, pride, refusing to submit. Okay, basically, th there's a few things with with pride. Okay, when we think of a of prideful attitude, we think of something within us that makes us um, arrogant. We think of arrogance. Okay, arrogance can be a type of pride. Okay, but there is a lot of other areas that pride can manifest itself in. First off, refusing to submit. For the wife who is, um, uh, you know, being contentious with her husband, that would be pride. Uh, for the husband who um, won't go and apologize to his wife, that is being proud, okay? For the husband who wants to be his own man, so he goes out and makes all the financial decisions by himself, that would be called pride. Um, there, there is definitely a refusing to submit there. Um, any, uh, it's, seems pretty obvious to me that the wife is not any less of a person than the husband. But sometimes people treat them like they are. Um, so, um, and also uh, having an attitude of superiority. Um, I'm better than them. That person's a sinner. You know, I'm not like them. Oh, that person's dirty. Oh, um, I, I'm really a smart person. Oh, I'm the best guitar player that I know. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. So I mean, it's an attitude of superiority, um, and, and so so this kind of shows itself in a few different ways. First off, refusing to repent. When we refuse to repent to the Lord and to others, this is pride. Okay, and and keep in mind, like I said before, the same pride that gets us into a situation will prevent us from getting out of the situation. Okay, so in other words, you have a conflict with, with your spouse, and of course they were wrong. And then you can't go and do your part to make amends. You can't. You can't do your part to be a peacemaker. You are refusing to repent. Um, when when we sin or whatever, and, and we come against the Lord and say, you know what, Lord, no, I, I or we just ignore the Lord and, and pretend like we don't need uh, His forgiveness. Um, this would be uh, pride. Uh, pride. And what does the Bible say? That God rejects the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Okay. And as we as we uh, make ourselves more prideful, we lose grace with God. And as we make ourselves more humble, we make we um, um, we get more grace from God. Okay. So let me think about it like this: 
I go and apologize to my wife. Um, and because I did that, I am now um, in a place where um, where I can grow. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to go. I'll be right back.